So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to do some more on the chain rule. So in the previous video we looked at the chain rule applied to multiple functions, f of g of h of x, and we're going to continue that here. So let's start with the example of f of x equals tangent squared of the square root of x. Now whenever we have something like tangent squared, I always find it helpful to rewrite this as tangent square root x, tangent in parentheses, squared. This makes it a little easier for me to see anyway what's going on. So here, we want to split this into an outermost function and an everything else. And the square is the outermost function. That's why I wrote it this way. So something squared is the outermost function. And our tangent of square root of x is the rest. So we have f prime of x equals the derivative of something squared is 2 times that thing, which is tangent square root x to the, well, 2 minus 1 power, which is just to the first power, so I'm going to leave it as this, times the derivative of what's inside, so der the derivative of the rest. So now let's think. Here the outermost function is tangent, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we're going to have secant squared of whatever's inside tangent, which is the square root of x. And then we're going to multiply this by the derivative of the square root of x, which is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. So let's just look at this again. The first part here came from our first application of the chain rule. We took the derivative of something squared, and so we got 2 times tangent of square root of x. This part, secant squared all the way to the end, came from the derivative of the rest, right? This is the derivative of tangent of square root of x. So, two applications of the chain rule. Let's look at one more example. Now, let me just say right now, you're unlikely to see anything this complicated, at least not very often. But if you can do this, you'll be fine. Let's let f of x be cosine of the square root of secant of 3 to the x. Looks terrible, but we can do it. And we'll do it slowly, and we'll do it step by step, but we're going to do it in one line. Well, actually, it might take two lines on the paper, but we'll do it in one continuous process. So, f prime of x. The outermost function is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's negative sine of whatever's inside. So we have negative sine of square root of secant of 3 to the x. And now we'll multiply this by the derivative of whatever's inside. Now if we look at what's inside, the outermost function here is this square root. So the derivative of square root is 1 half times whatever's inside the square root, which here is secant 3 to the x to the negative 1 half power. And now we're going to multiply by the derivative of what's inside here, right? What's inside the square root? The derivative of secant is secant times tangent. So let's say, let's start this on the next line. So secant of something times tangent of something. So this is going to be secant of 3 to the x times tangent of 3 to the x. And finally, we have to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside each of these, right? What's inside the secant, which is 3 to the x, so times the natural log of 3 times 3 to the x. So this looks horrible, looks very complicated. 
but let's look at it in the pieces in which we produced it. This was one piece. It came from the first part of our first application of the chain rule. This was the second part of that first application. This was the next application and our final application. So there's no reason to simplify this unless you're told to do otherwise. You probably won't be. So this looks like a very complicated thing, but think of it in terms of these individual pieces. Right? We develop these one at a time. You don't have to worry about what's inside here when you're, develop, when you're writing down the negative sign. You don't have to worry about what's inside here when you're writing down the one half to the, and to the negative one half and things like that. You're always dealing with only one function at a time. So if you can do this, you can do just about anything you'll ever be asked to do with the chain rule.